Hello, hello. Welcome. Today is another live. I'm back again for another Tip Tuesday. My name is Bethany. I'm with the education team here at Singer and we're going to be talking about something really fun today, but I am going to give people just a minute to hop on. It does take Instagram a second to notify all of our wonderful followers that we are live. <laughs> so I see some people popping in. Hi everybody. Welcome. It's another Tip Tuesday, so we're going to do this one. This one's actually going to be pretty quick, um, but it is relating to our project of the month, which I'm going to show you. Um, let us know where you're watching from. I'm very curious. I love to see where everybody is tuning in. I think last month we had people from all over the world. It was so cool. Hi, everybody. Thanks for, I love it when you guys talk to me in the chat, like then I don't feel like I'm just sitting in my sewing room by myself, even though I am. I love it when it's interactive. This is so sweet of you guys. Hi everybody. So I am, I am coming to you live from Nashville, Tennessee in my sewing room. Um, and my name is Bethany. I'm an education support specialist for Singer Sewing Company. And I am the one that creates uh, your monthly project of the month for singer.com. And for you guys. So I hope you guys are enjoying them. Hi, we have people from Guatemala and England. I saw the UK earlier pop up. Ghana. Hi, hi. New York. Oh, let's see here. I got you guys all. Oh, Tampa, Florida. I used to live in Florida. In Orlando. Um, Maryland. Hey, everybody. Thank you guys for saying hi. How did I get a job at Singer? LOL, I need it. Uh, you know what? I'll be honest. Um, I'll give you a quick little backstory while we let people jump on. Um, I have been sewing since I was about seven or eight years old. I don't remember exactly the first time I sat down in front of a sewing machine, but I know once I did, I didn't go back. Um, and my mom put me in sewing classes when she realized I had a really big passion for it. Um, I was probably around nine years old when I made my first full outfit, uh, a top and shorts, um, in one of my sewing classes at a beautiful little store here in Tennessee called Dancing Needles, which unfortunately isn't around anymore. Um, but I just loved the name Dancing Needles. I thought that was really cute. And, uh, I've been hooked ever since. My mom's a sewist. Um, she made most of my clothes growing up. She made a lot of her own. And then as we got older and it wasn't cool for mom to make our clothes, I don't know why I ever got out of that. Um, but that was that phase, you know, and then, um, she got into quilting and she is a very talented quilter. She does all sorts of, um, big quilts, which she just started a new one. She's excited about, uh, for their bedroom. And then, um, she does like wall hangings and table runners and all sorts of things, baby blankets and quilted diaper bags and she does all sorts of cool stuff and lots of applique and so I learned a lot from my mom but I have been sewing for about 30 years now I just gave away my age and it's okay uh and I honestly um had a completely different career for a long time um as I was raising my own son and um I met who is my boss at Singer the director of our education team and I met her because someone thought, hey, you should meet her. She loves sewing. And I had no idea who she was at first. And, you know, there's I always meet people that like to sew. And then I met her and I'm like, wow, now I know who she is and what she does. And that's really cool. And we stayed in touch and an opportunity opened up and it truly um, was a blessing and has been a blessing. Um, speaking of, I have been with Singer Sewing Company for almost a year. It'll be a year on May 17th. Um, and it has been one of the happiest years and I don't feel like I have a job. I truly believe that, um, my passion and my career have aligned and I know that's a rare thing and I'm truly blessed and I'm so grateful to get to come on here and see you all. So there's my little story. How fun is that? I mean, it truly is like, you know, meant to be. Um, and I have learned so much since I have been, uh, with Singer and I've been, um, having so much fun creating these fun projects for you guys. So, uh, let's see here. Let me tell you what you guys are saying. Oh, thank you. Y'all are so sweet. Thanks for letting me like take a few seconds to share my story. It's really sweet and special to me. And it's been on my heart a lot lately, just because this is my one year anniversary coming up with the company and just so grateful. Um, 
So I have a question for you all. I know you guys have shared with me kind of where you're watching from. I appreciate that. Um, Real quick, for those who just joined, my name is Bethany. I'm an education support specialist with Singer Sewing Company, and I am the one behind the scenes making all of our monthly projects that you guys have access to. These are free um, for you all to go and download off of singer.com. I believe we shared like a little reel or something that walks you through the steps of how to find these projects on our website. So go watch that after this live, of course, and download this month's um, project. I take photos. I give you step-by-step -step instructions, supply list, um, everything that you need. I try to be as detailed as possible in these instructions so that anybody, no matter your, your sewing skill level, can start and finish and have a successful sewing project and learn something new. So my question for you guys is we are on month five now of, uh, since it's May, of doing these projects once a month for you all um, as of this year. And I'm just curious uh, if you have done one of our monthly projects, even if it's just one, or even if you've just started it and maybe haven't had a chance to finish it, because I know how that goes. I have a lot of halfway finished projects. <laughs> Um, but let us know, let me know in the comments if you guys have done and tried or completed one of our monthly projects. I, you know, we put a lot of time and energy into these for you guys. Um, they are free for you to download and I try to do a lot of different variety of type of projects and types of sewing um, to kind of cover the basis. But I'm hoping that someone who is, you know, really into quilting or really into garment sewing or crafting will try to branch out and try some new things and I hope these projects challenge you to kind of get out of your comfort zone and uh, learn some new techniques that might be beneficial in your little niche sewing area that you like to stay in. I have my areas of sewing that I prefer to do. I love to do garment sewing. I made my cardigan I'm wearing today um, but a lot of these projects are more crafty or quilting or um, those types of things and not really garments. So uh, this is always fun for me to do different things. It kind of gets me out of my comfort zone. So I hope you guys are enjoying them. Let us know in the comments if you have done any of them. Um, even if it's not from one from this year, if you we have a whole list of them on our website. So go explore. There's all sorts of different projects that I didn't do that previous educators have done and people on our team. So go check them out. I highly encourage you to do so. So this month is um, working with faux leather. This is a material that a lot of sewists don't work with as much. It's very crafty related, but we are making cuffs. These are faux leather cuffs. Obviously you could make this with real leather if you want and the techniques I'm gonna show you uh, and the foot that we're gonna be using today will apply to real leather, faux leather, or even your choice of vinyl. Um, but I hope you guys go get this little project and I have them here with me. How cute are these? I just went to the craft store and just and looked at my supplies that I already had and it said, what can I, what would I want to embellish on a cuff? And I love this leather that sticks up off of it, this ruffle leather. And then I used, you know, different color threads. Like I used a gold thread and a zigzag stitch to attach it, but it adds some little character and pizzazz. Um, I used a pink, Kind of a in unique kind of uh, thread here um, to do a decorative stitch down this one with this fun rainbow beaded um, band. It's like a ribbon. This one is a marked as a faux leather. It's really like a vinyl on top with like a faux leather backing. It's soft on the inside. It's thicker, so it holds its shape really well. It's got that fun mirrored look, which I thought was cool. Um, really flashy. Um, so there are people that love that look and that style, and I wanted to do one that had a lot of bling. Um, but some more like subtle ones, more neutral ones. Um, so these were just inspiration for you guys to show you different ones that you can do. Um, but we're going to talk about the technique, because really in this project, it's all about learning the technique, and then you have like total creative freedom to do whatever you want. And that's what excites me about this project is for you guys to really play around with your sewing machine and learn about the different decorative stitches that you can use. Like, I just love how pretty and simple this one is. So I repeated it down both sides. Um, so I'm hoping you guys will kind of use this as a, let's learn the skill and then I'm gonna go have fun with it and get real creative and, and just use what you have. 
use what you have. Um, so for today's live, I made a new one and I made a skinny one um, because, because I'm, I had a hard time putting on the big one and then trying to sew. Um, but I don't wear bracelets a whole lot, that's why. But I made a little skinny um, band and I put dog mom on it with the little puppy dogs. So I thought I would show you how to do this one on the live with, while I demonstrate the techniques that you need to be able to create these bigger ones or put whatever you want on it. Now, um, these ribbons and, and, and embellishments that have metal like this, here I'll show you, like this one right here, or even this metal chain, I put that on one of them. And then I even got some little plastic beads here too. All of those you can't obviously sew through, but it's all about selecting the right stitch and going really slow to um, apply those to your leather without messing up your machine or your needle. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Do I have any questions real quick before we get started? Has anybody done any of our monthly projects? I sure hope so. Oh, there we go, awesome. Well, keep sharing. If you have done one of our monthly projects, let us know. But let's dive in into this project. Um, I'm gonna kind of move you around a little bit. So for today's um, demonstration, I am gonna be using our Singer Quantum Stylus 9960 sewing machine. Um, I love this machine. It's a computerized machine. It's very user-friendly, but it has a lot of decorative stitches and it does this really fun sequencing with the little doggies and everything. It's so cute. Um, so we're gonna show a little bit of that today. And the accessory foot that you need to have for this project um, to make it be successful. If you ever sew with faux leather, real leather, vinyl, any of those types of materials, you want something that is gonna allow the material to feed through the sewing machine smoothly easily without messing up the surface of the material. And that would be our non-stick foot, okay? And you can see here, it is very smooth on the bottom. Can you guys see that? It does have a little groove here that allows your embellishment or your decorative stitches to kind of flow smoothly across the top of the material as you're sewing. It does have a seven millimeter wide needle opening, which allows you to pretty much do every stitch that is available on your sewing machine. Um, so that is really nice. You have a lot of creative freedom when using this and because it is that smooth surface when you are sewing down your faux leather or your real leather, it's not going to leave any marks on your material. I don't know about you guys, but real leather can be very sensitive to scratches. Um, same with suede as well. It can be, um, scratches and marks and indentations and you don't want to see that you just want to see your pretty stitching and not where your foot went all the way down your material so this foot the non-stick foot is what you need to have successful faux leather real leather suede and vinyl types of projects okay you can get this foot on singer.com it is on sale right now and our uh, quantum stylus 9960 sewing machine is available on singer.com and on sale right now. And that sale I know is for the US, so you need to check your um, local website for those details to see how it is over there. I never tried my sewing machine in leather, but I have that kind of foot. So you are perfectly set up to do this monthly project. So I encourage you to go download the free project on our website. It's under the inspiration tab under sewing projects. It'll be the top one at the list. Just click on it. It'll tell you supplies and everything, which if you already have this foot, all you need is some faux leather or real leather or whatever you want to use and make it. It's so fun. Um, so definitely give it, give it a try. Thanks for sharing. All right. So when you first get started, you are going to need to cut your leather. So I'm going to kind of turn you down to my table here. Um, you're going to want to use a rotary cutter. Uh, it just makes it easier. You can use scissors, but I find the rotary cutter makes it really easy. You want a nice, smooth, straight edge on the edge of your cuff, okay? And a ruler. And you definitely want um, a cutting mat underneath where you're cutting. I have a cutting mat that literally covers the whole surface of my cutting table here, so I never have to move a mat around. Um, but I have a self-healing cutting mat that allows me to just kind of place and cut whenever I need to. But I am gonna cut this piece of 
uh, tan faux leather. You can see it's really soft on the underside. You definitely want to make sure that if you are going to use a, a vinyl or even something like this, that it does have a nice soft lining. Otherwise, you may want to line it with something because it is going to be touching the skin, okay? So we've cut our faux leather. And you have a couple options here, but what I prefer to do and what I did on this project, because I am using faux leather, it's not going to wear and fray or anything here on the edges. But if you're using real leather, you do want to, there's like a, like a paste, like a balm. I don't know the exact name of it. I have some back there. Um, but it's, uh, like a thing that you would put on when you're done along the edges of your, uh, leather, if you're using real leather to um, protect the leather, okay? But with faux leather, you don't really need to do that. Hence the reason why I like working with faux leather. Looks nice and really easy to work with. Um, this one does have some stretch to it. They don't all have that. So just when you're looking around and shopping, just keep that in mind. And we are going to attach this foot to our sewing machine. So I'm gonna bring you guys over here. This foot attaches like all of our other feet. We have the little bar here and we just place it under the ankle here and lower our presser or foot and it clips into place and it's attached. It's that simple, that simple. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna kind of scoot you guys back for a second and we're just gonna pick a decorative stitch. Um, we have our options here to kind of go through those decorative stitches. And I don't know, let's just kind of go through I like this one, kind of like a vine, so we can do that one. What's really cool about this machine is all of your stitches are listed up here. You would just uh, search for them with these buttons. Um, some of them have an option to edit it where you can flip it and mirror it, depending on which way you want the stitch to go. Um, some of them have that nice feature, which is really cool. So you can really personalize those details. So I'm gonna bring you guys in close. You guys are gonna kind of look down on it. And I'm gonna place, the um, faux leather under the foot here and lower it. And I'm gonna drop the needle and I'm gonna, I have my foot on the, <laughs> on the foot control on the floor. And we're just gonna stitch this out for a little bit so you guys can see just how smooth this foot is. And I'm really not having to hold the fabric. I want it to, cause the, the decorative stitch does move um, the fabric back and forth a little bit. So I want it to have the freedom to do so. So the stitch looks really nice. Um, but I am gonna just kind of keep my hands close so that it doesn't go off course and, and sews in a straight line. And I'm gonna speed it up a little. There we go. I am using a white thread for this demonstration today, but as you saw when I first started our live, I showed you some of the other cuffs that I had made and I used a rayon thread, I used um, like a rainbow thread, I've used different color threads. You can really have fun with it. You can do some decorative threads for sure for this type of project. we go. I'm gonna, I love the automatic thread cutter right there. And look at how nice that turned out. And you don't see any indentations from the foot. No marks on my faux leather. That just glided through perfectly and it looks really nice on the back side as well. Very simple, very easy. What did you guys think? That foot makes a big difference. It really, really does. Let me make sure. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the chat. I'll be happy to answer them for you. If I can, <laughs> I will do my best. <laughs> All right, so this time I thought I would show you guys the um, uh, sequence stitch, st if I can talk, sequence stitching. That's a mouthful, forgive me. Um, but before I do that, I had a couple questions. What kind of needles are you using? That is a fantastic question. I'm so glad you asked that. Um, in this situation, because this is a faux leather, I don't necessarily have to use a leather needle, but you can. Um, you could also use a denim needle or heavy duty needle. Um, 
that's where I would go in that regard. I have a denim needle on this machine right now. Um, so that would be a, a good one to choose. Um, you can also use a leather needle. If you're sewing with real leather, I would definitely recommend a leather needle. It's going to pierce that leather um, really crisply and prevent any snagging or anything. So again, you want it to stitch really nicely. Um, my denim needle did a great job on my faux leather. So <laughs> there we go. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys um, the sequencing. Now, if you have not seen the sequencing on the 9960 Quantum Stylus 9960 sewing machine, um, I'm gonna show it to you really quick. It's how I did this cute little dog mom cuff real quick. I just did it real quick. And someone just asked what kind of foot we're using. We are using a non-stick foot which is this white foot right here, this white little plastic foot. It allows um, the material, like faux leather, vinyl, real leather suede to glide th smoothly through the machine while you're sewing without leaving any marks uh, on the top of your material, which is really nice. So the nonstick foot is available on singer.com. And so is this uh, sewing machine. So let me go over here and I'm gonna show you all our Ah, uh, the cute dog. Yeah, so I'm a dog mom. I have a son too, but I have two dogs and I'm obsessed with them. So I had to do a dog mom one. Uh, let's see here. So let me turn this so there's not a glare and you guys can see what I'm typing. Is that better? Let me get you. Sorry, I'm bumping you guys. Hope you're not getting seasick on me. I apologize. Um, okay, so to do the sequencing with um, the 9960. It's very easy. You just have to kind of figure out which buttons to push, but I went to this one to get to my letters. There's a bunch of different fonts here, which are really cool. Um, if you just keep clicking this button, it'll change the, the different fonts. So I'm actually going to choose this one, which is different than the one I did here, just to show you something different. And um, let's stitch out. Uh, we'll stitch out... Uh, Scroll over and you're just going to touch the one that you want to do. Actually, let me clear that real quick. Let's pick an image first. So I'm going to pick the heart and to get to that, I'm going to click these other stitches and go back. Actually, I apologize. It's this one. Um, let's go to the heart real quick. Oh, there it was. So I'm going to click on the heart. Then I'm going to go back to my letters and let's type in the word heart, H-E-A-R-T, and then I want to do another heart. So let's scroll through here and get back to our shapes. Oh, I missed it. There we go. And we have a heart. We have the heart, the word heart, and another heart. But I, if I don't put this little dot right here at the end of it, it's like the period at the end of a sentence. If I don't put that, then this sequence right here will continue to repeat. If I want it to repeat, I wouldn't put that. I would clear that away. But I only want to stitch it out once, and I'm going to um, put a stop at the end. And now that I have it all set, I'm going to scroll back to the beginning so that the first one is selected and it is going to stitch this out in order. There is another um, button on here that if you were doing multiple words or wanted spaces between, you could put a, there's a little box to put a space in between. So you can definitely get really creative here. You could um, do someone's initials or whatever you want on the little faux leather band. So let's stitch out this sequence right here and I'll show you how that works. So I'm going to turn the machine back around so I can get to it and I'm going to move you guys over real quick. Now we are going to wrap this cuff like if we were to finish it today we would wrap it so we would want it to read across just like this okay but the machine doesn't sew across this way it feeds this way so we do have to feed it in this way and it will be going down this side so I'm going to just lower my foot. Now you have two options here. You can hit press on the foot control on the floor with your foot to get it going or I'm going to swing you guys over. You can unplug your foot control on the floor. Okay. 
and you can just hit the start button and it'll stitch it out for you. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna hit start and it's gonna do it for us. It will go at the speed that you have your machine set to. So if you wanna slow it down, you can slow it down with this little speed control here or you could speed it up. I don't like to go too fast when I'm doing these, especially on a thicker material. And it is almost done. It's very quick. There you go. And I'm gonna hit the scissors to cut my threads, lift my foot, and there it is. I'm gonna plug my cord back in so I don't drop it. There we go. I know it's backwards for you guys, but I hope you can see the heart, the word heart and the heart. What I would do is take some little snips and snip out all of these little extra um, threads so you don't have those along the bottom. And you can just snip and you can kind of do that here and in between the letters, okay? And then once you do that and clip them on the back, you may want to use um, some little fray check or whatever along the back to just make sure that those threads don't come undone as you're wearing it. Put a little fray check, it'll dry clear and then it'll look like this. So you can see each individual letter and there's no stitches in between. How fun is that? Let me see what you guys are saying. If you have any questions, let me know. Is this considered a heavy duty machine? It is not. It is not our heavy duty line, but it can handle heavy duty materials as long as you're using the right needle, the right feet. Um, and yeah, it's a great, great machine. So this machine and the heavy duty 6800C are two of our, my favorite computerized machines that we have. We have a lot. Um, I like computerized machines because I feel like you get a lot of um, decorative stitches and extra things like that, like the automatic scissor cutter, needle up down, start stop, speed control. Those are all really nice um, features on our computerized machines, not just the ones I mentioned, um, that I, I personally like. It makes um, my sewing experience a lot easier and uh, faster so I enjoy that but I do use some of the mechanical machines as well and you'll see me use those on our live sometimes too there's nothing wrong with this all right so any questions about lovely thank you any questions about our non-stick foot any questions about sewing faux leather any questions about our monthly project I think what I'm going to do next real quick before we go is Let's see here. Let me cut a little bit of this off and we'll stitch some embellishment on real quick. There we go. Now I did cut it a little longer. You can um, cut it to the edge. You can wrap it around if you want. I dropped my clips. Hold on. My little clip bag fell off. If you guys wait till I'm done with this, I will give you a sneak peek at next month's project of the month, um, which I am obsessed with. But I love a good denim project. I gave a little, a little sneak peek there away. So all I'm doing right now is just laying this lace uh, embellishment along the edge of my faux leather. Um, it's just hanging off a little bit and I'm using clips to wrap it around the back side and I'm gonna just stitch down right here and show you guys how well that goes. Vinyl is also good for this foot. Yeah, so you can use that, you need to use this foot if you're gonna sew with vinyl. Um, back in January, we did a really fun like zipper pouch that was made with vinyl and you put sequins in it, it was so cute. Um, Meredith did that one and this foot is a must for the vinyl projects for sure. All right, let's go back over here to the machine. Let me move you guys again. Sorry. There we go. I'm gonna put the foot back on the machine. All right. Now, this machine does have um, buttons right down this side right here. These are 
very commonly used stitches. So they're just a quick but push and go. So if you don't have to go searching through all the stitches to find these most commonly used ones, like a center needle straight stitch. And then if you wanted to edit it to change the length or the width or distance or length, you can, but we're not going to. We're just gonna click it and be ready to go. And we're gonna drop that needle. And I'm gonna do a little bit of a back stitch once we get going, just to secure my stitches here. Can you guys see that oh well? All right. I wanted to make sure before I kept going. Now that I'm getting to the end, I'm gonna take my clip off and just hold it down. You could pin this in place if you want. The only thing about pinning with leather is it will leave a hole, it will leave a mark. So I really like using the, the quilting clips or, you know, the little, I use them for my garment sewing and everything. I love the clips. All right, so how cute is this? And it like little dangle hangs off, but it sewed that so smoothly. And it tacked down the back side. So if we needed to trim a little bit, we could. We could trim that off. Um, but that makes such a cute little cuff. How fun is that? I love this one. I know this was like my little sample one. But now I kind of want to make some more. <laughs> All right. I will try the vinyl for my new project. I'm excited. Thanks for the tips. Oh, you're welcome. That's why I'm here. That's why I love doing these for you guys. And I love that feedback. Thank you. Um, let me see if I missed anything else. I don't think I did. Again, if you did any of our monthly projects, drop them in the comments, even on the playback of this. We love to kind of see um, that you guys are enjoying these. But also, if there's something that you want to learn, something that you want to... Um, learn to sew or see something demonstrated, please let us know those things in the comments, whether it's here on this um, live, we'll be saving it to Instagram, it'll be posted to YouTube. Let us know those things. Maybe it's on a different uh, Instagram or Facebook post that you see that you wanna comment. Hey, I would really love it if Bethany would show us how to do this or that. We wanna know, we wanna make sure that we're giving you guys the content that you need, okay? We want you guys to learn and feel more comfortable with your sewing machines. What did I use to close it? That's a great question. In our tutorial here, I explain exactly how to use snaps to close it. So I'll show you on this one. It's just the little snap kit. I ordered it online and it just has the little um, snap and it goes on just like that. Now you don't have to snap, you could use Velcro, you could use a jewelry clasp, um, you could use all sorts of different things. I like snaps because it allows me to put it on myself without having to need someone else to help me um, put on my cuff, but there you go. And it just snaps on. Now I did fold this one under because it was a small skinny one. Um, so I did fold it under uh, and just did a little straight stitch, which it's on the underside so I don't really notice it. Um, you can add extra holes if you have, I meant to add another snap and I didn't, but to make it more adjustable, that's totally up to you guys. But yeah, uh, snaps is what I chose to use in this project, but be creative. Try some different ways to uh, enclose or snap clothes or Velcro or whatever you want. Um, there's a lot of really uh, cool clasps in jewelry. Sewing spandex. You would like some tips on sewing spandex. Uh, I sew a lot of knit fabrics, stretchy fabrics um, for myself. I sew a lot of my clothes. Um, so maybe I will do something that I can come on here and give you guys some really helpful tips on sewing with knits um, because I know that that's really hard and, and spandex falls under that category of sewing with something stretchy, a stretchy material. And there are some really helpful tips on and best practices to have successful sewing projects with using those types of materials. So I will work on something. I appreciate that feedback. Thank you. I get asked that question a lot, so I will be sure we do something regarding knits. All right, now as I promised before we go, before we go, I would give you a sneak peek to next month's project of the month. Uh, I haven't really ever done this before. I don't think, if I have, I can't remember, but I'm gonna do it today. Nobody told me to, but I just, I'm so excited about it, I had to share it with you. Y'all know I love a good denim project. So, 
for the month of June. As you do know, it is Father's Day. Um, it does kind of kick off grilling season. I feel like the end of May really kicks off grilling season and we want to be prepared. So we will be learning to make denim aprons and we will be recycling old jeans to use for the pockets and the belt loops and all of this. So this is where your little spatula can go. This is a kid size because it's just easier to show you the kid size on a small screen. But I give it to you in kid size and adult size. You'll be making and cutting out this pattern yourself, which is exciting. So if you've never, it's such an easy pattern, I promise. Don't let that scare you. Um, but how cute is this? And you have the option to learn how to make your own strap. And what I love about this, I know this is the kid size. I'll stand up real quick. But as you put it on, See how it hangs down really low? I've got my ties here. You just pull the ties to raise it up and then you would tie it around. Obviously this is the little kid size. But how easy and cute is that? So that's our project of the month next month. I hope you guys will um, enjoy that one. I will be back. Um, I come on the second Tuesday of every month to do a little tip Tuesday relating to the project of the month. So I have some very helpful tips about this project that's coming up. I hope you enjoy it. I love it. How exciting. Thank you. You like it. Awesome. What size needle do you need? Did you say to sew leather? So they make leather needles. So if you're sewing with real leather, get leather needles. If you're sewing with faux leather or vinyl, you can use a denim needle or a heavy duty needle. Um, those would work just fine. I used a denim needle today on my faux leather and it worked great. I used that same denim needle, um, to do this kind of like faux, it's faux leather, it's kind of vinyly covered, faux leather uh, and it worked fine. So uh, take it slow, but definitely have a stronger needle in your machine. All right. Oh, you're welcome guys. I'm so glad you guys enjoyed this little tip Tuesday. I will be back next month um, for the next project. But again, we hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, the Quantum Stylus 9960 sewing machine that I use today is available on singer.com. And so is our featured foot, which is the non-stick foot, which is definitely a must have for successful faux leather, leather, vinyl, and suede projects. So go get that, check it out, they're on sale. Also, I'm planning to make one apron. I'm so excited for your new life. Oh, thank you. Awesome. These aprons are so easy, I've made so many. My dad even has one for his wood shop um, to keep him from getting so much sawdust all over his clothes. Um, so he loves it. He keeps it in the wood shop. So they're great, not just for grilling. Um, and I hope you guys have fun with it, but until next month, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Have a good one guys. Bye.